Okay, guys, so we've now covered all the basic stuff to do with compressors. Right? We've looked at the concept of dynamic range. We've looked at how the signal flow works inside the compressor. And then we've looked at the threshold, the ratio, the attack and the release in detail. Right? And in the process of learning all this stuff, we have learned the following. The signal comes into the compressor. It passes through the compressor circuit, the automatic amplifier, and then out of the compressor and off to our mix. We've then learned that a copy of that signal is split off and sent to the detector sidechain circuit. The detector sidechain circuit then measures that copy of the signal against the reference threshold level that we've dialed in to see if that copy of the signal goes over threshold. And at any point where the signal goes over threshold, the detector sidechain circuit sends a control voltage to the compressor circuit, telling the compressor circuit to turn down the level on its copy of the signal passing through. Boom. We've got that down, right? Okay. So now we've, we've learned that. Let's now look at the different techniques we can do with the detector sidechain circuit. And we're going to begin with the techniques that most people refer to as side chaining. Okay, so when we do what people call side chaining, then what's happening is this. We cut that copy of the signal going to the detector sidechain circuit. We cut it off so that that copy signal no longer reaches the detector sidechain circuit. Right. And instead we bring a completely different external signal into the detector sidechain circuit. So we have a different signal coming into the detector sidechain circuit than we have passing through the actual compressor. Right. Now let's change the waveform in the compressor circuit. Let's change it to this. Okay, now this is like supposed to be a synth drone wave. It's just a continual waveform of a synth, not changing level, just a drone synth going like that, passing through the compressor. And then we are feeding a kick drum into the detector sidechain circuit. Okay, now to do this technique, you want to make sure that your reference threshold level is set nice and low. There's no point having it right up high where the signal being fed into the detector sidechain circuit might not trigger it. Okay, you want to have the threshold down low enough to make sure that whatever you are trying to get to trigger the compressor will always go over threshold. So our kick drum comes into the sidechain circuit and every time it goes over threshold the detect sidechain circuit sends a control voltage to the compressed circuit telling it to turn down the level on the drone synth passing through the compressor circuit. So the drone synth gets turned down here like that. And then again here, when the next kick drum triggers the compressor. And then again here. And then again here. Okay. So the kick drum comes into the de detector sidechain circuit. Every time the kick goes over threshold, it sends the control voltage. The kick drum's going boom, 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 boom. And it's turning down the drone synth. So the drone synth is turning down at those points where the kick triggers the compressor. So the drone synth is going and turning down at those points like that. Okay. Now that is called ducking, but this is what people call side chaining. Okay, but the, the actual term for this is called ducking because the kick drum is ducking the level on the drone synth. Let's hear what that sounds like in real life. All right, here in logic, I've got 
a drone synth. There it is. And on the drone synth channel, there is a compressor. Now this is the drone synth. Just a continuous MIDI note going on and on and on. Okay, and then here I've got a kick drum. So I'm gonna feed the kick drum into the side chain of this compressor. So the kick drum playing four on the floor is now triggering the compressor and the compressor is on the drone synth track. So the drone synth is passing through the compressor. The kick drum is going to trigger the compressor, which will turn down the drone synth every time the kick drum goes boom, 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 like that. Ready? Here we are. Let's bring the compressor in. Let's hear it. Right, if I mute the kick, it's still triggering the compressor. We can hear the drone being turned down every time the kick happens. Right, that's the kick ducking the drone synth. Right, now if we look at what the waveform looks like for that drone synth, here's the waveform of the drone synth without being ducked. It's just a continuous stereo left right block of a waveform going along. That's it, we're listening to it now. And here's that drone synth waveform after it's been ducked. The kick drum is ducking it down here, 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 and here. So every time the kick drum triggers on the one, two, three, four, the drone synth gets turned down here, 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 and here. Okay, so that is a kick drum ducking a drone synth. The kick drum is fed into the side chain of the compressor the drone synth passes through the compressor, the kick drum ducks down the drone synth. Okay, now another really common area that you'll see ducking being used or hear ducking being used is in commercial radio, right? When the DJ speaks, the music turns down automatically, so you can hear the DJ. When the DJ stops talking, the music comes back up in level. It happens all the time. And the way this works is, right, here is a music track. And on that music track, that stereo track, I have a compressor. Right, so here's the music. Okay, and then here I've got a DJ vocal. But it's a bit hard to hear the vocal with the music playing at the same level all the time in the background. Have a listen. Okay, guys, here's one of my favorite bands at the moment. Rock and Roll Suicides from London. This is a demo I made for them recently. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, this compressor is on this stereo music track, and I'm gonna feed the DJ vocal into the side chain. Right. So now every time the DJ vocal speaks, it will turn down the level on the music passing through the compressor. The stereo music track is being ducked by the DJ's vocal. Every time the DJ vocal happens here, you'll see the compressor meter move. Here we go. Okay, guys, here's one of my favourite bands at the moment. Rock and Roll Suicides from London. This is a demo I made for them recently. This song is called Rid of You. Rock and Roll Suicides. Okay. Now, to do this technique, I'm using a quite long release. I've got almost a second release time on the compressor because I don't want the release to be so short that when the DJ talks, that the compressor has a chance to turn back up in the tiny little gaps between the individual words the DJ is saying in any sentence. I've got a long release, almost a second, so the compressor can only turn the level of the backing music up when a real gap appears in the talking, longer, than three quarters of a second. And then in those gaps, the compressor can then turn up the level. But the, the, the release is long enough that the compressor can't turn up in between the individual words the DJ is speaking. So there we have a DJ vocal ducking a stereo music track, classic um, commercial radio. Okay guys, here's one of my favorite bands at the moment. Rock and Roll Suicides from London. This is a demo I made for them recently. This song is called Rid of You. Rock and Roll Suicides. I got rid of you. Okay, that's another very common ducking technique to duck a backing track, you know, the, the, the music broadcast 
is ducked by the DJ's vocal. Very, very common. And then one last area where you'll often get people using the ducking technique is people will duck a bass line with a kick drum. So here I've got a bass line. All right. Okay, guys. Turn that vocal off. Here we've got a bass line here. Right. There's a compressor on the bass line track here. And I'm going to feed the kick drum into the side chain of this compressor. So the kick is going to duck down the bass notes when the kick plays here. When the kick plays four on the floor, every time the kick drum triggers the compressor, it's going to just duck down the bass note that falls on that same quarter beat. So the idea is that every time the kick drum goes boom, it triggers the side chain of the compressor on the bass line track, which makes the bass note just drop down in level, just a little bit, just when the kick drum sounds, so that the bass is just dropped in level to make a little space for the kick drum. And for this technique, we use a fast release, because as soon as the kick drum goes boom, and just lowers the level of the bass note on the same quarter beat, we want the bass note then to come back up in level as soon as the kick drum has gone boom. We don't want a long release so that the following notes of the bass line are still compressed because the release is too long and it's holding on to the compression. So we use a short release, right? So now this kick drum is going to duck this bass synth line. Now it's subtle, it's hard to hear, but have a listen with the kick muted. You can just hear the bass line notes going up and down a bit on the quarter beats. So duck, 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 duck. Right, and bring the kick back in. Okay, so that's another very common ducking technique. The kick drum ducks the bass line. So the, every time the kick sounds, the bass note on that same beat where the kick drum is just lowers in level a smidge to make space for the kick drum. All right, well, that's another very common um, ducking technique. Okay, so there you go. Ducking, which people call side chaining. Okay, now let's just look at the last example of that visually. Okay, using the DJ vocal and the backing music, uh, the, the stereo music program being ducked down by the DJ vocal. So in the detect sidechain circuit, we feed in the DJ speaking vocal. So the microphone is fed into the sidechain circuit and then the, the stereo music passes through the compressor. So let's have the stereo music passing through the compressor like that, All right? Now, again, we want to make sure our threshold is set correctly to do this technique. If we have the threshold too high like that, then only the loudest words the DJ says will trigger the compressor to turn down the music. So we want the threshold to be brought down really low so that everything the DJ says, whenever the DJ speaks, everything the DJ says goes over threshold to make sure that every time the DJ speaks, it turns down the level of the music. All right? So here the DJ vocal is being brought into the detector sidechain circuit, the music track is being sent through the compressor, and every time the DJ speaks, the control voltage is sent, turning down the level on the music track, like that. So the DJ speaks here, 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 and here, and the backing track is turned down. There, 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 and there. And then in the gaps, when the DJ leaves a space here and here, the music turns back up there, 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 there. And then after the last thing the DJ says, he stops talking, the music turns up and the track plays at its natural level from that point onwards. So there's a DJ vocal ducking a stereo music track, another classic ducking technique. Or use of the ducking technique okay all right so there you go that is the ducking technique what people call side chaining okay and um, that's that let's move on and look at the other technique we can do with the detector side chain circuit <laughs>